Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, this week's Google Plus Platform Office Hours. Uh, I'm Jonathan Barry. I'm Wolf Dobson. How are you? Hey, guys. Uh, this week, we're a little bit short staffed, so it's just going to be us folks uh, talking about uh, JavaScript and APIs, and uh, no participants this week. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask on the uh, Google Plus post. Uh, I'm watching it right now. <laughs> on the Google Plus Developers Plus page. Uh, so JavaScript. Um, JavaScript using the Google Plus APIs and actually a lot of the other Google APIs is, uh, is a lot easier these days. Um, especially with the newer APIs we <coughs> we've been releasing, uh, we make it easy to call it from, let's say, something like uh, native JavaScript or um, from one of our client libraries. Um, actually, I'm going to do some coding, show you some code, and, and walk through some documentation. So we're going to switch over to this laptop with screen share enabled. And I'll be right back. Hold on. And we're back. So now, uh, the first place to look about the Google Plus uh, APIs is obviously our developer site, developers.google.com slash plus slash APIs. Uh, there's a nice overview of, about the things like API, um, API quota, authorization, API calls. Um, but uh, in, in regards to JavaScript, for anybody who's tried to call a REST API from the browser, uh, you'll run into our friend called uh, same origin policy, which basically prevents you from making calls in an insecure way that may compromise the user. Um, that's a good thing in some contexts, but it makes it hard to use APIs. Uh, there are newer techniques that are part of HTML5 spec, um, but there's actually ways around in the older browsers to allow you to call um, RESTful APIs. And, and we call that JSONP or, or JSON with padding. And the Google Plus APIs support JSONP. Um, and all you have to do is in the API you're going to call, uh, include a callback parameter and the name of a function you define within that page. Uh, so when that when that um, the Ajax call gets called, it actually fires the uh, the function you've specified in the callback um, with the data with the response. Um, and that's true with Google Plus APIs and some of our other APIs. Uh, so I'm going to show an example of doing that. Uh, of course, with all New projects. We're going to start a new project with our API Explorer. So let me go do uh, create a new project right now uh, through our console, rather. We're going to call this Office Hours JS Demo. That's a great title. <laughs> I'll be able to find it later. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, we have a lot of uh, projects. Uh, <laughs> comes with the territory. Uh, so to enable to use the Google Plus REST API, I'm going to enable the Google Plus API service. I've got to agree to the standard terms and conditions. And there we go. Uh, that service is enabled for this project. Uh, now I have a sample here. Um, and there's us. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, so what's going on here? Um, I'm actually going to use a bit of a jQuery to make this thing a little faster, but this would work in standard JavaScript. Uh, it's just an AJAX call with that, that parameter, the callback parameter, um, and jQuery just makes it easy to type it up. Uh, so right here we have the jQuery uh, get JSON. JSON is a shorthand for AJAX with JSON response, which all of our APIs respond in, in JSON. And then we pass in the endpoint that we want to call. Um, I'm going to do a v1 uh, people search. Uh, I'm going to look for the, the query that I'm actually going to pass is Barry, which is my last name. Are you ego surfing? Is that <laughs> what's going on? Well, I know there's going to be a, a reply for that one. That is true. Uh, and then there's a key parameter. So key parameter is the first required field for all a API requests, and that's an API key. So if we go back to the, the console, the key comes from the, uh, the API console. And within the API console, uh, you go to the API access section. And then we have this a unique key. Uh, don't copy this down. I'm going to delete it later. Uh, but use that um, from each one of your projects to, so we know how to do bucketing. And the calls will fail. So I'm going to actually put in my key. Make sure I save that. Uh, and then that callback parameter. It's, that's the, the third thing. Um, and this is just a string. I'm concatenating it. And then I'm passing in the callback function. Um, I define that function up here. 
Uh, and that function is pretty simple. Just take the response and spit out um, the inner for loop, uh, the different fields. So let's try this. I have it running already. And there you go. Um, this is the first 10 results, which is the standard page size uh, from this people search query. Uh, and that's using JavaScript straight up. Um, Why don't you go ahead and make that bigger? So we can read it. Oh. Ah, that's better. And there's me at the bottom. Um, let's see, what, what, what can I show you here? Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that this is not an authenticated call. So for any resources that are private, we use OAuth2 for all of our authentication. Um, and that gets a little bit more complicated, and jQuery doesn't help a whole lot there. And you would have to construct all the whole key exchange and, and the, the secrets. Um, but we do have a client library that's an alpha, which is the next thing I want to show. Um, in this case, you can act, you uh, you were able to make the uh, unauthenticated unauthenticated call, but you included the API key, yep. which then uh, allows us to. Uh, uh, that means you aren't going to get bounced. Uh, otherwise, you get a I believe it's a 400 or is it? It's a what's the? Let's just, let's just mess, make up a key, and I'm going to call this uh, Wolf. Yeah, some some really really inadequate key. So if you if you don't include a key, or if you include a silly key like this one. Um, you get an uncaught exception, um, then everything starts failing uh, because you don't have access. Mm -hmm. um, you will also, if you don't include a key at all, you're actually going to end up getting, you might actually get through once, uh, <laughs> uh, but you'll rapidly run out of courtesy quota. Um, and so that's why we want you to create your... Uh, Excellent tip. Uh, we want you to create a project and, and use an API key. Um, so we have... Client libraries in different levels of completeness or stages of um, release. Uh, for example, we have our Java one is uh, is just you know pretty well supported in beta. Um, we have Python. I think you worked on the Python, didn't you? A little bit. And that's in beta. And then we also have our friend JavaScript. And the JavaScript client library, uh, what that does is allows you to do these calls but it actually invokes our discovery service. So it works with the other APIs that are part of our discovery, that are discovery service enabled. Uh, for those who are not familiar with discovery service, uh, it is a way for us to publish a JSON schema, a JSON definition basically, of all the APIs that allow a clever client library to suck them in and create an easy to use API interface in that native language. So for Python, it creates Python friendly APIs, for JavaScript, for JavaScript friendly APIs, um, and Ruby, and and, uh, and so on. Um, if you're interested, uh, you definitely check out the discovery service and how that works. It'll help you understand the API better. But to be honest, if you just want to get up and running, get one of the clients. Um, so with the JavaScript client, it's JavaScript, so I can run it from the browser. I actually don't have to download anything. Um, there's just a simple include I add to my page, and then I instantiate that API. Uh, once I instantiate the API, I pass in the service I'm interested in, mm -hmm. and it starts dynamically building uh, the set of the set of uh, API interfaces that I need. Um, we're going to use Google Plus, obviously. So here's the st a starter application that's using the same unauthenticated API, but with um, with the client. So how does that look like? I have a single script include here at the bottom. Uh, there's an, a, a convenient onload ready handler that you attach as a URL parameter to the include, uh, and that'll get uh, that that'll be the last thing that gets called after the page loads. Yeah, so DOM on ready as well as the API has been instantiated. Uh, it fires this guy, and you'll see there's just two simple parameters um, to get this going. Uh, I pass in an API key, like I did before. Um, Probably something not your key. Not, not your key. I'll use the same one as before. And then the API you want to load. Um, this one is called plus conveniently, and then the version, and then a callback once that's ready. Uh, let me just go back to uh, our API Explorer. If you guys haven't seen our API Explorer, it's super handy uh, for working with the Google API stack. Um, but that means any API that's defined within the Explorer is available to any one of our clients. And that includes Analytics, or Blogger, or Freebase. Um, <clears throat> so you can use that in Python, in JavaScript, in Ruby. 
uh, in, with, with a convenient wrapper. So let me go back, grab that API key. That's highlighted in blue there. I'm going to paste that in. Um, <clears throat> because this is supposed to feel native for JavaScript developers, it's callback based. So you'll see that we have our onload handler that passes in a callback that calls a load function or on ready function. And then the on ready function has a load function, its own load function that calls a make request. That make request builds the request and fires it off and then passes on a, uh, a callback for the, um, the execute function. Uh, right here is the onload. Here's the native onload. The, here's the native make request. And then there's a callback function for the execute with the response. Uh, we did an inline function here. You could have just passed it to another function to, to go ahead and handle it separately. Um, what are the parameters for the make request? Uh, you build a, a request. Um, you invoke the request function. Again, this is gappy.client.plus.people, and that's dynamically generated from the discovery service. Uh, and then the particular parameters for this API is query, which we saw before. And then you just attach a execute on top of that to object. And then we're good to go. So going back to the browser, there we go. We have the same response, and we have um, it spit it out. Uh, I also have console.log. I think my console.log got screwed up. One second. So you guys can see what's happening. Uh, I'm actually uh, modifying the CSS of the dev tool so we can properly read uh, what's happening in the console. And I think it's not, uh, it's not being honored right now. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> for those who can see it, you can uh, just zoom in using the browser scene. Could you? No. Yeah. I yes. can. Oh, well. How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. Thanks, Wolf. <clears throat> I also outputted an object for the response. Um, that line is found right here, console.log response. And this is the actual API response. This is the same response that we got in the job, native JavaScript call. It's the same response you'll get if you do the same query within the API explorer and also using any of the client libraries, uh, Python, Ruby. And in fact, Python and Ruby are, are structured very similarly to, to this, where you uh, request a client. Once the client is lo loaded, then you can make calls on it, and those calls are, are executed uh, either, actually, in, in the case of the Ruby client, they're uh, uh, executed synchronously. So oh. you execute, and they come back. Um, but the neat thing about this is um, most of the client library handles the, the creating the functions and the objects, um, and because it's, you know, once you go from there, you can easily um, output the, the different um, response objects. So we had the item um, that we spit out, and we had this array um, of objects that we uh, were able to output. I just output the display name, and we could do w what we want with that, right? Um, so now, very powerful. <coughs> it simplifies integrating with uh, many other Google APIs, and also makes the, the Google Plus API integration a little bit easier, uh, which is powerful. And now. With other APIs, there's um, authenticated resource. Even Google Plus has some um, you know, OAuth scopes. So how do we do that? Um, the client library, all client libraries handle that, and the JS client is no different. Um, it's a little bit more code. Uh, I think I should remove some of these comments, but uh, it's, a little, it's not too much different. So we have the same JS include with an onload handler, and this one is uh, handle client load. We, what we do here is instead of just having an API key, we have a client ID as well and the scopes for the OAuth. Um, for the way we do our OAuth is, I don't know, version 23 of the OAuth 2 spec, um, but you define a bunch of scopes, you pass in which you request, and then the user can go ahead and um, authorize that in the, in the OAuth dialog. Um, so let me pass in that API key. But when you're using OAuth with any one of our APIs, you have to make sure you create a client ID. Um, so you go back to the API access sec section, uh, create an OAuth 2 client ID. Um, we're going to just call this OAuth uh, office hours. Uh, you can just put a display name and logo. This is what gets showed up in the um, OAuth dialog, and it's important for later. Um, but for this purposes, we don't really care about it. Um, you set a host name for this. Uh, I'm actually going to use localhost because we're running on localhost, but you would set the, the domain that you're actually calling the, the API from. 
and you create a client ID. You saw there's different types of client IDs. If you're doing a desktop application or some of our new uh, new implementations as well, and you can create multiple client IDs for the same project. So if you have a JavaScript client as well as a say a app engine client, um, they can use separate IDs if you want to bucket it that way. If you choose to sign your application, um, well we do want to bucket it that way. <laughs> Let's see, is this the right client ID? You can also enter more than one uh, JavaScript origin. Um, so if you want to have a test version and a, uh, uh, and a version that is uh, running on your server, you can actually enter them both in that, uh, in that JavaScript origins box, um, which can be nice. Yeah, you just enter, uh, as you're showing there, you can just enter uh, uh, more than one in a line. That'll save you the trouble of creating like three dozen client IDs for your you know, three developers or, or your 30 developers, I guess. <laughs> Let's make sure I paste everything the right. That would be a copy-paste error, which we don't have an error for response for that. Um, <laughs> 418. Uh, no, no, no. IDC 10? <laughs> 418 is on the teapot. Are you a teapot, Wolf? <laughs> Only if I get a 418 back. Cool. So I added the client ID, added the API key. Uh, the scopes, uh, Google Plus only has one scope right now, which is the plus.me um, OAuth scope, uh, which basically identifies the, the currently logged in user. And I pass in the API key, and I do an OAuth dialog pop-up, which is the authorized um, API endpoint, uh, which you pass in that client ID, pass in the scopes, um, and another piece of metadata, which says basically all this now um, authorized right away. And then we, assuming that the user has authorized the, the OAuth dialog, then there's a callback, the handle auth result. And it passes that to a new function, and we display some stuff. Um, the stuff is very similar to what we did last time. Uh, everything else is the exact same as the unauthenticated API. Um, it just so happens that we're choosing a simple API, but uh, you, you would have to handle the different APIs and however you want to display the information. Um, so let's see if... Uh, if we copy and pasted everything, and we've configured it properly. So you get an authorized button. You get a nice authorized dialog. See, that's the name of your project I set. Um, allow access. And boom. It's actually pulling in my Google Plus profile for this demo account, uh, profile picture, and the name that I've set. Um, <coughs> it's using OAuth in JavaScript, and it handles pretty re relatively easily. Um, <clears throat> so a note about the JavaScript client, uh, that is an alpha, but uh, we're using it, uh, obviously, and we have people using it in production. It's pretty stable, even though it's in the alpha state, and uh, if you have any feedback or bugs, there's a group, uh, Google group associated with the JavaScript client, we can report all those issues. Um, Wolf, any closing thoughts on JavaScript? JavaScript is awesome. I agree. <laughs> No, uh, it, it's really useful, and you can drop it into, uh, you can get, uh, it's, it's a way to get uh, authentication done very easily. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you're writing your own uh, handlers, and you're dealing with refresh tokens, and all the rest of that stuff. And the JavaScript client will hide that from you in a good way. <laughs> It'll make it so it's a seamless experience for your users, and a seamless experience for you. And, you know, just as a JavaScript developer, the API is pretty natural. Uh, that that callback flow and the dynamically generating the objects attached for all the method calls. And it's pretty nice. Cool. Well, I think that's it for the live coding or live demo. Uh, let's go to the, the plus thread and see if you have any questions. Uh, uh, we actually uh, we have that and then we have this one. Yes. So from yesterday, uh, why don't you read some of them? Uh, are you planning to change the plus one button back? Uh, there was a very uh, active and interesting thread on the developers plus post about these office hours about the plus one button. And in general, it seemed to be a lot of uh, end users, which a lot of the developers are, talking about their it, whether they like the plus one button, if they don't like the changes, and their opinions on how that affects uh, the ecosystem. Um, and typically, this is a this is developer office hours, so we, we, we answer developer questions, but I think it's a fair question to still address. Um, it's a very simple answer of, of the evolution of the plus one button. The overall design direction of Google Plus has been going to this red and white theme, and um, we just upgraded that, that original scheme to the new one. 
Um, and we're, the numbers seem to be, in general, that people like it, and it's, it's improving things. So uh, that's, that's why we, we made that change. And of course, if you have more feedback, um, the feedback button on the consumer version. Um, lower left-hand corner. Lower left-hand corner is the best place to vocalize that, uh, though, of course, um, on Google Plus, is, is also a good place to vocalize it. Another question we got is, will this be recorded and posted on YouTube? The answer is yes. yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for those who haven't been in an on-air hangout or uh, just not familiar with it, uh, it is a YouTube live stream. So when we're done with this, um, we'll go ahead and clean up um, the bits and pieces and post that, as well as with uh, show notes, which includes any sample code that I demo, any interesting questions that need uh, further explanation or links that are interesting. Uh, during the office hours. Well, one of the questions we got also is uh, looking at the uh, code.google.com Google Plus platform issues list. And the question was, do we read those? And the answer is, oh yes, we read them. <laughs> we do read them. Uh, we read all the posts that come in on Google Plus developers, our, our, uh, our Google group. Uh, we do read them all. We know about them all. We really thank you for reporting them. Uh, obviously, you know, we uh, bring them to the Ange teams uh, in the cases where that's going to help. We talk about them internally, um, and we're going to, uh, we try to keep those updated as things change. So, yes, absolutely, we see them. And uh, <clears throat> just the, the differentiation between the, um, the issues list versus the general feedback button. Right. Uh, the general feedback button... So that's, and when he's yeah. saying that, he's talking about the button that's in the lower left-hand corner, the, the one if, if you're looking at Google Plus, it's like right over there. Um, the uh, <laughs> um, that that button when you click send feedback goes to the product team. That's going to tell. That's going to be feedback about. I don't. Uh, you know. Uh, I want to know how I can post this. I want to. Uh, what Feature requests. Yeah. Exactly. I want. I want to be able to share this with these other people. Whatever. I'm having. Uh, I have feedback about the circles UI. Things like that. Or even just issues. General issues that you have with Google Plus. Like uh, my screen's not loading, or the CSS is shifting everything to the left. Those again, just as a, as with the uh, as the issues list, we read them all. And there's there's huge amounts of people who go through all of it, sift it, collate, send it to the right groups. So hangout issues go to hangouts, and stream issues go to streams, and photos go to photos. Um, but we uh, manage the developers issue list. So those are features that uh, developers who use our APIs and our other plugins and such um, would like to see or, or find issues with. So we actually manage that list, and so we read every single one of those personally. Oh yes, and uh, uh, you're absolutely welcome to post issues there. Uh, we currently are uh, focusing on issues with the Google Plus platform, the REST APIs, and the Hangouts API, and plugins. Um, so the oh yes, absolutely. And plus the one button. Plus one button. The badges. Personal badges. All that good stuff. Uh, let me see here. Also typos. If you find any typos in our documentation, we're happy to fix those. Oh yeah, we want we definitely want that uh, that to be good. Uh, let me see here, uh, and that looks like uh, pretty much it. Although there's some disagreement over whether we're in uh, standard time or daylight time. We're definitely uh, we're definitely in uh, Pacific time, uh, and I think it's currently daylight savings. So <laughs> that's what you need to know. <laughs> Timeofday.com. Um. <laughs> We're in Mountain View, California, right now, right out there, Mountain View. Although, no, <laughs> no actual mountains to be seen in Mountain View. We're facing the wrong direction. Uh, well, that was all the content I had for this week. Um, it was a short one, um, but I hope that gave you guys a sense of what you can do with JavaScript uh, with with regards to our APIs. Of course, uh, there's also our our favorite topic, which is the Google Plus Hangout app which is in developer preview, and that's completely in JavaScript as well. Um, and you may be able to use some of the techniques you saw today inside of a Hangout app. Uh, I believe you have a, a blog that goes with techniques and tips and tricks um, that you discover. It, it has two tips, but they're good ones. Uh, plural, though. <laughs> if you, gotta, you go to hangoutbots.blogspot.com. Uh, I've been posting a couple of things that we, we use. Uh, we have an example that is uh, just a, uh, using the... Uh, JS API inside a Hangout, it works. You do have to use, it works differently depending on whether or not you're in a gadget versus when you, whether or not you're using the iframe solution, uh, which we uh, also posted there, which is a way around cross-site scripting problems, uh, same origin policy, that sort of thing. Um, I encourage you to take a look at it and uh, give me feedback. 
Yeah, and thanks everybody for um, watching the stream. It was live, and everybody's watching it uh, years later. Uh, and of course, anybody who's asking questions on <laughs> people in the future. <laughs> Ooh, what do I look like in the future? Um, for asking questions on the thread. Uh, you know, I just want to make a, a one last note that uh, great plat the office hours are a great place to ask questions, including the thread that we start um, mm -hmm. around each one. But we're here to help um, you know, in uh, many different ways at all different times. Uh, of course, you can ask us directly on, on Google Plus. Our, our Plus pages uh, profiles are, are pretty prominent and easy to find. Um, um, we absolutely recommend that you use the Google Plus developers. It's Google dash Plus dash developers, and Plus is spelled out P L U S. And we actually have uh, a link from our developer site. Yep. So if you click on discussions, uh, that that is that will get uh, that gets read by everybody in the team and. Uh, uh, and also our wonderful community that will also help you out. Yeah, there's actually quite a few folks that in there now who are sort of de facto uh, community managers. Pretty awesome to see that they've played around with our APIs and our technology, and they've gone through some of the struggles that you may have, and they tend to answer sometimes before we do, which is good for us. Which is great, and it's it's uh, wonderful to have such a such a strong community. And of course, the issues list um, for for any. Uh, Things you feel like they need to be communicated to that list is another great place. Um, and uh, a last you note: if you, uh, uh, especially with people who are having uh, questions or issues with the uh, plugins, with the plus badges and the profile badges, absolutely encourage you guys to post a link to your site uh, so oh. that we can, uh, we or somebody in the community can take a look. Um, a lot of times, uh, it's a matter of like, oh yeah, you have this kind of iframe or this kind of whatever. Or you have, uh, or we can just look at your console. We can look at your code. We can get it. Uh, we can get a turnaround to you a lot faster. Um, also, JS Fiddle and GitHub Kiss for um, JavaScript code. Yes. Cool. I think on that note, uh, it's, we're done for this week. Um, check back next week for the next office hours. Bye. See ya.